Shock, no pun intended. Abso effingly in shock. I'm pulling out what little hair I have left after seeing what freaking happened to Ken Roxon and in Levi Kitchen. This race at first, I was going, Man, this track is is boring. This track is easy, but then you start thinking, okay, easy makes speeds increase, which then causes riders to ride over what the track can actually function safely. And boom, you've got guys going down left and right. You have March banks with the red cross flag. You have McAdoo in practice. You've got Sexton crashing. You have jet making big mistakes. You have uh, ironic. Well, you have e Eli Tomac making some mistakes, but he, well, we'll get into it. He was pumping out front, just hauling freaking butt. Um, who, who else was there? Gosh, Kitchen was down. There were so many guys that ended up falling down. This was the plague of Nashville. And man, let's just let's just look into it. Okay. Just boom. Just straight away. Look at this freaking catastrophic event that happens to Ken Roxon with his bike, with the shock just blowing up. And then he is just what what is he supposed to do? What is he supposed to do? Is he supposed to just go, oh. The, the shock blew. I'm just going to slam on the brakes and I don't know, roll over on the side of the track. No, he triples in, which if you watch my track analysis video, I warned everybody about these couple sections where I was talking about the start. And I was also talking about this section right here. If you go watch it, the track analysis video is there. It's well done. I mean, I'm biased about it. But anyway, back to what happened to Kenny, because I like to digress. He triples in freaking Holland, but that bike instantly, I was going, this bike blew up. This bike freaking blew up, but then he was still traveling through the, the whoop. So you're like, okay, it didn't seize. But if you watch the slow-mo, which I am going to get into exactly what's going on here in my track analysis videos, when the week starts, it's either going to happen Monday or Tuesday when I'm going to do that video, but this should never happen. Kenny should never get hurt because of the equipment coming from a rider that my career ending injury happened because of a bike malfunction. This is so unfortunate for a rider that was, was, was beating jet Lawrence and could have won the race. If you watch my live show that I did with the podcast, which is great. Again, I'm, I'm biased about that as well. I said that Kenny was going to win. Kenny was going to win. It was either going to be Kenny or Sexton, and both of my picks went down. Ironically, Rob Beams, he was right about the podium where it was going to go Jet, Tomac, Webb. And, dude, Jet made it happen. He absolutely made it happen. But Kenny, those first couple laps, he made the move on Jet. This track was a track that you could not override because of just how – hard packed it was the bike is slipping a bunch it's less forgiving the bikes may potentially be a little bit softer and could this have been part of the reason as to why this bike exploded was because of the sheer fact that this is a giant lip that wasn't meant to be a triple truthfully on the track map i don't know why they added uh another little roller into it. They changed it up a little bit in this section. This was supposed to be a triple, but it ended up being a double. Again, Dirtworks did an amazing job because of the sheer fact that it was raining. They canceled press day. And that's another thing is these guys weren't able to bust out these huge sections until they got on the track like four or five times. But press day is so important because they get two times on the track, you know, they could do morning and afternoon. They get a few different sessions. And so they're able to click this stuff off so that they have it in the bag. Maybe it'd be a little bit more fair that there was no press day because it was canceled. However, man, dude, just looking back at this, I am freaking just, my heart is broken for Kenny because I'm telling you right now, this happened. What is the problem? The problem is ACL. He tore his ACL. Something is in there. It might even be a uh, plateau fracture um, with his tib and fib, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's just the ligaments of the the 
the stress on because of how he crashed, but I'm going to break it down in this week's video, dude, but watch this. So he blows the shock and then that bike just gives out on him. And what is he supposed to do? These whoops are huge. I'm, I'm guessing Kenny wishes that as opposed to a nine whoop rule, there was probably a two whoop rule because he would have been, he would have been clean as a whistle, but no, then he goes boom, 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 and catches his leg and crashes, dude. Oh, oh, I'm so pissed about that. But again, how and why did he crash? That shock should have never, never blown up. Nitrogen should have never went anywhere, especially being a factory bike. Even if you want to say that this isn't a sheer factory bike, it's a factory bike by a progressive. They've got money involved, but it's not a production level bike. You know, these are all fine tuned parts to make this Suzuki happen because i i'm using that word a lot ironically in his heat race he was winning and the bike killed okay but it was foreshadowing to what happened in the main event the bike killed him simple you should never get hurt because of your equipment never get hurt because of your freaking equipment and before i finish with the 450s uh, i want to just thank uh, the channel sponsor for the live show is Precision Transport. Make sure you give them a call at 877-827-0618. They help with uh, freight. They do dry loads and, you know, uh, refrigerated loads. So it doesn't matter what you're shipping across the country. Make sure you're checking out Precision Transport. These guys are big into jujitsu. They love to trail ride. They love to off-road race. They love motocross and supercross. They go to a lot of the races and, you know, they help out with the channel. So make sure you're checking them out. But here, if I'm talking about a little bit of the 250 class, dude, if I was Mitch Payton, I would be freaking pissed. I would be absolutely pissed as to have both of the riders that are winning the championship go down. And I, I have to say it. I have to say it here. First, watch this. Anstein runs over Levi's head here. It just awful. And Kitchen is able to get up and make it to where it is only like, what, three points, maybe two or three points in the championship when he was originally going to be 16 points back. Dude, the, the dude is tough as nails. Not saying that Cameron isn't. Cameron is completely tough as nails. And I'm going to say it right here on the live show. I believe he has a separated shoulder, which is an AC joint where the collarbone sticks up. It's not the crack of the collarbone. Potentially, maybe he does have what Cody Shock had with a broken collarbone that needs to be plated. You can maybe ride with that if it's not moving around. And especially once it gets plated, you can ride with it. An AC joint is going to be very, very hard. There's lots of riders have this. This is a very common uh, injury for guys. I have a grade three. I was talking to Jerry Robin, uh, gosh, probably two months ago. He has to, has to ride with a bump on his 450 because of his AC joint. So the fact that Cameron could even get on and still finish the race well, not even finish the race, but just try to ride and qualify for the main event it says a lot. But I will say this. Unfortunately, I will freaking say this. I still kind of think that this some of this stuff can be avoided here. OK, what happened a few years ago? I believe it was Atlanta, uh, one of the outdoor supercross races that were at the speedways where there was a certain rider, Chris Blows, that ended up getting flight for life out of there because there was riders that were compromised being injured. Dude, this guy's the points lead. Like, I, I get it. I get it. Why is this sport just, ah, so it, injuries are just present always in this sport, but they're, they're gladiators. They're going to go out there and fight to the death. But man, how is it that McAdoo just gets involved in some of this stuff? And this was really caused by McAdoo. You've got Levi on the outside. This section is four wide. Truthfully, on a supercross track, you should be able to do four wide on the track. But Levi jumps to the outside and he catches his and cross ruts or cross jumps into his teammate and it takes them both down. Well, it takes Levi down and then McAdoo ends up falling down at the top by getting taken out by other guys, though. But that's just so unfortunate. And it's it's ironic that I'm even saying stuff like this because if 
Levi was in that situation. I'm, I'm kind of applauding Levi because he got up and now he's so close to the championship battle because of him pushing through. Cameron is the same thing. Yes, it's a series of misfortune events. Nashville is a plague. It took out so many guys. Was it the track design? Sure, you could blame the track design a little bit on stuff. However, it was just the riders, the level of talent that the, these guys have. Why is it that you have Phil Nicoletti that is quitting after this? He, I'm so happy that he said on live television that, Hey, I'm 35 years old. I'm scared of getting hurt. I, it's not a matter of how bad it's going to be. It's a matter of when I'm going to get hurt. Cause it just happens. His teammate who's arguably faster than him, March bakes got hurt in that first heat race. And is that going to be a pelvis deal? I mean, he was down the entire race before they read, uh, red flagged it. It is, is a tough, tough. These guys, dude, uh, I'm so happy that, you know, I'm not racing anymore because I'm scared to race because of this. These guys, I give it to them that they're they're feeling alive. The amount of adrenaline that these riders have is just outstanding. And the the them being able to do these crazy sections by clicking off jumps at the main event when there's the most risk, but there's also the most reward. It's cool to watch, but it is such a dark sport sometimes when you see this stuff happens like what happened to sexton and especially kenny like kenny could be done he's not going to race world supercross if he's got an acl tear like he could potentially hold off but he's then compromised his body's compromised and him being a mature individual i could see him just going hey i'm gonna fix it and come back stronger than ever and if we talk about back the 450s with freaking eli tomac dude the dude just, oh, I wanted to see Beast Mode so much for those last few laps to have him just catch up to Jet and take back what is his as far as I am the GOAT of Supercross. I am going to show everybody that I'm going to win this championship. But no, Jet is taking control of it. And Eli is doing everything he can possibly to hold on to it the dude is at the top of his game that just shows you the level of competition that is happening in both the 250 class and the 450 class i said it in my track analysis video that that start was going to be very important and what it happened with levi kitchen in the 250s and also deegan in the 250s when you get bad starts you get bad gate picks and so you're having a somewhat start on the outside of that stuff you don't get the best gate pick and so what happened? This could have been avoided. What happened with uh, Kitchen could have easily been avoided if he would have started out front. He wouldn't have been close to all these guys. What is this? Um, eighth place or so? It's just just unfortunate, but that's part of the, the scenario when it comes to racing dirt bikes is you got to do your best and take it as it comes and know when to fold them, know when to just have that elbow down. And so this was just... Bad situations between Cameron that ended up making it worse. Usually things kind of compound with stuff. And unfortunately, that's what had happened. As Carmichael alluded to on the broadcast is that, you know, you don't win championships on your good days. You win them on your bad days. And this was definitely some bad days for a lot of riders. Most notably is Ken Roxon. Just going back to that. I just, I'm. I'm I'm sure it is an ACL. I'm I'm sure, but you guys let me know. We're gonna get some new information as the days go on, whether or not he wants to actually share any of the information. But that shock should have never blown. Shock should have absolutely never blown. And maybe would it have been better if you could have jumped through it, but with that shock already blowing, he was just holding off. He probably knew exactly right at the uh beginning of that triple on the landing probably heard poof right there and then what do you do you just keep a wfo and you hope for the best and he almost made it out here look he had like three whoops left and speaking back about the 250 class like i'm, I'm impressed with tom but really the thing that i see about what's going on with tom vial and honestly cooper webb as to why they are so good in the championship right now has a lot to do with this nine whoop rule because jumping through them is faster. It's easier on the body. You can stay looser and you don't have weird mistakes happening. So next year, I would like to see it go back to like 12 whoops or have it be two whoop sections, you know, that are uh, both over 10. I, I really think it would separate these guys a little bit because what happened with this track is the dirt works guys. They don't know exactly how their track is going to perform until you get the best riders in the world actually riding their track. But from my 
analysis and looking on it. And dude, I got, I got, a, yeah, yeah, I do. Here, I'm going to pick my nose on live. Oh, that wasn't even the right nostril. It's all backwards. Um, yeah, F it, right? That's, that's just what it is. My hair, I'm pulling it out and I've got stuff in my nose. So I, I'm sorry, guys. But my point is, is from my analysis is the track was easy. You're seeing these guys go double, double, step on, step off. It was easy. So it's forced for these guys to push a little bit harder to have lose traction here and there. And when that stuff calm pounds, well, now you have speeds that are riding over what the track is actually designed to do. Sometimes having gnarlier sections that make guys with their tails go in between their legs, it makes guys like Tomac and Jet even that much more special because they're able to still perform. Cooper Webb is one of those guys that highlights on some difficult tracks. Okay, so I'd like to see potentially tracks being a little bit more difficult. Just leave out the Dragonbacks. The Dragonbacks, yeah, we can all say Dragonbacks are bad, right? But when it comes to the nine whoop deal, I do believe that that rule should be changed. You have a lot of the riders talking up about it, but yeah, the, the tracks have already been designed. They're already set up. So we got three more races to go and we'll see what happens. But both classes are so, so freaking close. Could I be wrong? With the separation on Cameron McAdoo with the AC, yes, it could be a collarbone. You know, it could even be his scapula could be cracked too, right? There could be lots of different things. Just from what I see, how he landed, these guys don't wear really any shoulder protection. To me, it seems like that's a collarbone. With Kenny, looks to me like it's that ACL, which is bad because those things make it hard to ride. You don't want to stick your leg out. You get timid. And I want to see Kenny in outdoors. I want to see him in World Supercross. I want to see Kenny really off the Suzuki. I want to see him on a factory level bike, but not have the factory set rules and obligations. Let him do what he wants to do, be an independent contractor, but also still have the type of equipment that like Jet Lawrence has on that freaking Honda or that Star Yamaha. I'm not saying that that Suzuki is inferior equipment, but it is. There was two malfunctions to that bike. That happened in his heat race. He lost because it died on him and he didn't have an electric start, right? You could easily say that, hey, um, is that thing even, is it carbureted or does it have main jets and pilot jets or is it fuel injected? I want to say it's still, maybe maybe the Suzuki is advanced enough to have at least fuel injection, maybe not an electric start, but God hopes. I, 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 haven't, I haven't ridden one of those Suzukis in forever. And last time I rode it, it was still carbureted. So anyway, somebody let me know in the comments below how much of a silly dumbass that i am that i don't even know if that suzuki is is i want to say it has to be freaking um <laughs> doesn't have to be carbureted here but my point being is does he just have the idle way too low but anyway that was a bike malfunction that happened in his he race and then it killed him in the main effing event like oh oh so oh gosh i almost dropped my liquid death here this is not sponsored by it, but man i would sure love to be sponsored by these guys because this stuff is it's like gold man because you can be at a party being like me you could be 33 years old and you know you you just drink water this stuff is freaking water this stuff tastes like sprite and maybe i am hopped up on too much costco cookies do you see these things these things are almost gone and because of freaking inflation this sucker's 9.99 but you know what i still buy it because i'm addicted to these things yes i did love it when it was only seven bucks but you know freaking 10 bucks if these things were 50 bucks i would probably still buy it freaking crazy absolutely freaking crazy but till next time guys make sure you are hitting that subscribe button and notification icon because i've got i've got i've got freaking notes out the wazoo here of everything that went down and for the patreon supporters i'm gonna upload it here and just a bit <laughs> in overview okay Monday and Tuesday, we're going to go over all this breakdown. Amazing race. I really thought that this track was going to be boring because of how slow it was. But, man, you put the best riders in the world on a easy track, and they are going to make it sketchy. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. You guys enjoy your weekend wherever you freaking are. Where's the Ed button?